Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today I've got a nice number theory problem that actually comes from my favorite number theory book, but we'll get to that. So our goal is to find the length of the pre-period and the period for this rational number 1 over 10 factorial. So let's just recall first of all that if we have a rational number, then it has a decimal representation that terminates or a decimal representation that eventually repeats. And in fact, the ones with a decimal representation that terminate can be thought as one of the types that repeats, where it just repeats with a bunch of zeros at the end. Okay, so let's uh, maybe put that into the following notation. So if we have a over b, which is a rational number between 0 and 1, just to keep it easy, then that means we've got a decimal expansion of a over b as 0 0.a1, a2 up to am, and then b1 up to bn, and this is the repeating portion. So all of this does not repeat, but from here on out, it repeats in chunks that are n digits long each time. So this bit at the beginning, the digits a1 through am, is called the pre-period. So we would say that this has a pre-period of length m. But then this repeating portion is of length n. So maybe we would call that the length of the period. Okay, so like I said, this comes from my favorite number theory book, and it's simply called Number Theory by Andre Duyella. And I'll provide a link to where you can buy that book in the description if you'd like to check it out. I can't highly suggest this book enough. It starts with very simple notions of divisibility and then works all the way into what would really be beginning graduate level number theory. In fact, I think this book could be used to teach maybe two or three courses in number theory. Okay, so let's look at the proposition that will help us answer this question over here, which is inside this book. So let's consider a over b, so that's a rational number, and then also we'll suppose that b factors as follows, 2 to the r times 5 to the s times c, where c does not contain 2 or 5 as its prime factors. So we can encode that here as the GCD of 10 with c is equal to, not 0, is equal to 1. Then the result is that the length of the pre-period is the maximum of r and s, and the length of the repeat or the length of the period is the order of 10 mod c. So let's take care of this first bit first, this length of the pre-period, because that calculation is a little bit simpler than the length of the repeat and requires less kind of like number theoretic machinery. So let's notice that both of these results um, have something to do with only the denominator here, and so only with 10 factorial. So let's see if we can write 10 factorial in this form as a power of 2 times a power of 5 times a number that doesn't have any 2s or 5s in it. Okay, so 10 factorial is clearly equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8, times 9, finally times 10. Now what I'll do is just kind of highlight where I get powers of 2. So I get a power of 2 clearly from 2. I in fact get 2 to the 1 here. Here with this number 4, I'll get 2 to the 2. Here with this number 6, I'll get 2 to the 1 times 3. Here with this number 8, I'll get 2 cubed. And with the number 10, I'll clearly get 2 to the 1 times 5. So putting this all together, you'll see that we have 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus 1, which is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 powers of 2. So that means we can rewrite 10 factorial as 2 to the 8 times 5 to, well, what power is 5? Well, we've got a single 5 here and then a 5 from the factor of 10, so it'll be 5 squared and then times, well, this number c, which in this case we know exactly what it is. It's 3 times 3 times 3 squared, so that'll be 3 to the 4th times 7. And in fact, we could maybe easily calculate this, and this is the number 567, just kind of a head, as a heads up. We'll need that for the second part, but not quite the first part. 
So notice the first part says that the length of the pre-period is the maximum of the powers of 2 and 5. So it's pretty easy to take the maximum of 8 and 2, and you'll see that we just get the number 8. So that means the length of this pre-period is, in fact, the number 8. Okay, now let's hold on to the rest of this. Now, notice that this number C that's left over is 567, which means we'll need to calculate the order of 10 mod 567. And that's what we'll do to finish this off. Now I'd like to take just a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. If you're a lifelong learner of math, science, or computer science, you might want to consider Brilliant. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands of lessons on a variety of topics ranging from simple to advanced. And in fact, new material is added every month, so you'll never run out of new stuff to learn. No matter your learning style, Brilliant's interactive and unique take on learning with awesome hands-on puzzles and graphics will have you mastering skills in no time. Recently, I've been looking at two courses in Brilliant. For myself, I've been working through their course on quantum objects. It's been really great, and especially to learn something outside mathematics. And then I've also been working on the pre-algebra course with my son. He really enjoys it. It's a nice change of pace from what he's learning in school. So what are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash michaelpenn or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And thanks once again to Brilliant for continuing to support this channel. So we just calculated the length of the pre-period of 1 over 10 factorial to be 8. Now we'd like to find the length of the period. And by the result from that textbook, that is the order of 10 mod 567. And we calculated why it's 567 on the previous board. But now I want to recall the definition of the order of an integer modulo n. So we say the order of a number a mod n is m if a to the m is congruent to 1 mod n, and m is the minimal such number that lets us achieve that. And here we're taking m to be a natural number. We'll also use the fact that the maximum order mod n is phi of n, so Euler's totient function applied to n. So let's maybe write that down. So the maximum possible order here is equal to phi of 567. But you can calculate using the standard formula for phi if you'd like to. I'll just give you the answer. This gives us 324. Okay, so now we're going to use a result that follows pretty quickly from the definition, and that is the possible orders are simply the divisors of the maximum possible order. Okay, so let's list these systematically. So maybe we'll list all of the odd divisors here, maybe noting that this is just a two squared and then times three to the four. Okay, so all of the odd divisors would be one, and then we'll have three, and then we'll have nine, and then we'll have 27, and then we'll have 81. And then we'll get divisors built off of that by multiplying each of those by 2. So that'll be 2, 6, 18, 54, and 162. And then finally, divisors built on that, dividing or multiplying everything by 2 again. So that'll be 4, 12, 36, 108, and 324. And those are all of the possible divisors of 324. But we know that there are no primitive roots mod 567, so we can actually never achieve this maximum possible order, so this 324 is not possible. Furthermore, this number 1 is also not possible because 10 to the 1 is not 1 mod 567. So now from here, you would just play the game of checking these. And to be honest, I would do it in a computer, unless you're in a contest situation, then you'd have to maybe use the method of repeated squaring to narrow these things down a little bit more carefully. 
but maybe we'll just jump to the end and note that if you take 10 to the 18, you get one modulo 567. But anything smaller than that does not allow you to achieve one mod, mod 567. So 10 to the 12 won't work, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 6, 10 squared, 10 to the 3, so on and so forth. This number 18 is the first time that we can achieve 1 mod 567. So that means not only do we know the pre-period is 8, but we know the length of the period is 18, which is exactly what we wanted. So I've got some other number theory problems on the channel if you'd like to check them out. And also, if you've stuck around this long, maybe think about subscribing to the channel. That's really the easiest way to help this channel succeed. And that's a good place to stop.